Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, today we're going to be looking at how we can use the Book Creator app for retelling stories to support the development of early literacy and creative music skills. I will put this within the context of Glasgow's Literacy for All approach to early reading and writing development and I will also highlight the relevant skills in line with the Glasgow Create Music programme. I just wanted to start with this quote because it really underpins the literacy for all approach to early reading and writing development. In the early stages, children try to behave like readers and writers with the pretending gradually getting closer and closer to the real thing. Therefore, playing and investigating are a very significant part of that process. The literacy for all approach recognises the importance of modelling reading and writing behaviour for children as well as providing opportunities for them to play with and explore the features of a text that they have read or listened to and to do that in a variety of different ways. Hearsay Play Write is Glasgow's own approach to the, stages, um, the early stages of writing and this very much goes hand in hand with our early reading approach. And many of you will be familiar with this already, so I'm going to give a brief overview of this. And if you would like further detail, the Literacy for All Twilight presentations for both early writing and early reading, as well as supporting materials, are available on the Glasgow's Improvement Challenge tile. So when we're thinking about the first part, the here, listening to stories is a really key part of early reading and writing development. And this should be an engaging experience for children um, with teachers and adults using voice actions and props to enhance the storytelling and really inspire and engage the children. This is an opportunity for teachers also to model key aspects of the story and to highlight features of language, um, for example, rhyme, alliteration and the use of punctuation, um, which often feature within children's stories. The say and play parts of the model really feed into one another. So this is about children actively interacting with the structure and the language of the story. So for example, in lots of ch um, children's stories, there's opportunities to join in with repetition and refrain. And as the children become more familiar with the story, they will begin to retell the story themselves. And this could be done through structured sequencing activities or story mapping activities, which are supported by the teacher, but also during free play. Um, for example, we want to encourage the children to be um, dramatising story during role play and using props to support. This is an al also an opportunity for the children to practice new vocabulary in a safe space um, and in different contexts. They may also begin to experiment with changing aspects of the story during play and this really supports them when it comes to um, creating their own texts. When it comes to writing, these experiences will support learners um, whether they're writing using words, mark making or graphics, um, they've got all of these experiences behind them. And this could include writing during play contexts or it could be indoors, outdoors. And the shared guided and independent model that we use for this approach supports learners to write with increasing independence. So shared being when the writing is mainly modelled by the class teacher um, and the whole class are observing and contributing. Um, the guided model is teachers supporting smaller groups of children where they're taking more ownership of the writing and independent being uh, that we want children to write with as much independence as possible using the tools available to support them. So today we're focusing in on the say play aspect of this approach and specifically looking for opportunities for retelling stories. Through retelling stories, children are demonstrating their understanding of a text, um, something that they've read or listened to, and also their use of key vocabulary um, that they've learned from that story. And although we are looking at earlier stages today, we're looking sort of primary one to three, this approach could be adapted for older children. Um, for example, if they're summarising the main ideas in the chapter of a book, they could use this approach. So please keep that in mind when we um, come to look at using the digital tools later on. So just to link to the Literacy for All tracker, which ma uh, many of you will be familiar with already, um, I have chosen first level tracker one, uh, which is around uh, primary two, so the beginning of first level. Um, and you can see there, I've highlighted in the bottom right hand corner, 
um, the aspects of reading, which we will be looking at with this type of um, use of book creator to retell the story. So it says down there, um, we want children to retell what they found out in a story, use a story map that has been created by others to retell a story, and then moving on or building on that to create a story map of their own to retell a familiar story. Linking that then into writing, you can see down in the bottom left hand corner under creating texts, children need to be able to imitate familiar texts and patterns and this will enable them to become increasingly confident when they create their own ideas for fiction texts. Okay, so we've seen story maps mentioned there within the tracker and you'll probably be familiar with these examples um, that you can see on the slide. Story maps are an effective way to help learners internalise the story through a multi-sensory approach. So this could involve drawings, movements, models, actions and expressions. You can see some of these examples are just pen and paper. Um, some are using props or models. One of the examples has been taken outside into the playground. And in the bottom right hand corner, you can see the children gathering um, outdoor materials. And in this case, they were building habitats to go with the story of the Gruffalo. And that was um, supporting their retelling of the story. But story maps can really help children to identify the key aspects of the story, like the plot through their pictures or actions. And then we can begin to get the children to add in interesting words or repeated phrases. They could be added in on post-its, for example, um, or there could be aspects of punctuation or rhyme that could be highlighted dif in different colours on their story map. Um, but key vocabulary um, is discussed throughout the retelling of the story. So today we're looking at the use of digital tools within Book Creator to retell a story using images, text, voiceover and sound, which is just another way for learners to engage with the features of a text and to demonstrate their understanding. So as we're taking an interdisciplinary approach today and um, we're looking at how we can also link musical skills um, into this, um, I wanted to introduce the concept of sound stories. Um, so we're looking at how we can develop the creativity and music schools, skills through adding uh, sound to the story. We want to encourage learners to think about different ways to create sound using the resources that they have available. So for example, children could start by using their voice and body percussion, so that's anything like clapping, stamping, tapping their knees, or to be creative with every, everyday objects found inside or outside um, to create the sounds that they're looking for. Um, and of course, if there are instruments available, then these could be used as well. Sound can be added to a story or to enhance a story in different ways. So for example, it could be that you're choosing one sound or one instrument per character. Like this um, Gruffalo example, you could choose five different instruments for the five characters. Um, you could include sound effects for particular events that happen in the story. Uh, for example, this, the sound of somebody's footsteps. Um, or it could be used to create atmosphere or enhance the setting of a story. So if we're thinking about the example of the Gruffalo, um, the children could layer sounds together to create a sort of soundscape for the forest. Um, and that's obviously a little bit more complex, thinking about having multiple sounds being recorded at the same time. Okay, if there are instruments available, then this activity also encourages children to tune into the timbre or the tone quality of different instruments. Um, and it allows them to experiment with the different ways um, that the instruments can be played to create different effects. Introducing the vocabulary of shake, tap, ting and boom helps learners to describe the tone quality of basic percussion instruments. And you can see examples um, on the slide there of instruments that would fit into each category. And if this is an activity that they're doing at home, for example, um, the children could be finding objects around the house like rice or pasta within a tub would make a shake sound, uh, just like a spoon against a glass would make a ting sound. So through exploring contrasting sounds, children will begin to understand basic music concepts related to tempo, dynamics and pitch. And you can see those um, key concepts along the bottom there are fast, slow, loud, quiet and high, low for pitch. 
And it's important to also give children the opportunity to talk about their choice of instrument or sound and how it relates to the particular stimulus. So for example, if you are trying to find a sound to represent a character, um, then and a child has picked a drum for the Gruffalo, can they explain why they've made that choice? Why does that enhance that part of the story? You can also extend their thinking by asking questions like, I wonder what it would sound like if you started loud and gradually got quieter. So encouraging the children to think beyond just choosing a sound, but how are they going to use that sound or that instrument um, and how might the sound change um, during the story? Okay, so just linking that to the Glasgow Create Music Skills Progression Pathway. Here I've got the first level, um, uh, something from the first level framework, and I've picked out the e &O, which focuses on creating or composing music. And this type of activity can touch on many of the skills within this e &O, like exploring sounds, responding to a stimulus, creating rhythms, and even leading to using uh, basic notation. Um, but it also um, touches on the music technology aspect in the fact that the children are recording and playing back sound in a very simple way. So this document can be accessed via GLOW. And you can see that here by clicking on the GIC tile, GIC partners, and then the Create logo. So there is a, a framework for music at early level, first level and second level with supporting resources. And there are also example lesson plans for sound stories, which comes under composing, um, for different stories like Jack and the Beanstalk, Three Little Pigs, but obviously it can be a, the same sort of um, structure and model can be applied to any story. Um, and some of you will have seen these lessons modelled by your Youth Music Initiative tutor um, in your classrooms as well. So I'm going to show you how we can use digital tools to capture the sound and add it to an ebook. So a sort of extension of that sound story uh, type lesson. I should also say that the digital tools that we're going to look at in the next part of the webinar um, link with the digital literacy framework, which again can be found in the GIC tile along with the literacy and Glasgow Counts frameworks. Okay, so I'm first going to demonstrate how to create a new book in Book Creator and then look at an example of a sound story that I created just using the context of the Gruffalo. Um, so you can see the logo there is that rainbow coloured one with the scissors cutting out the little book. So the first thing to do is to locate that on your um, home screen. So you just tap that icon and you will have the option there to open a new book. So if you see in the top right hand corner there's a yellow box that says new book. I'm going to select that then it gives me the option to choose um, what layout I would like for my book. So you can see the basic ones along the top or um, you can choose a comic book type layout as well, depending on what you're doing. So I'm going to choose square for this one. Then we have up in the top right hand corner, the little eye icon. Um, if you tap on that, that gives you the option to change the background color of each page. So you can have a basic colour or there are some really nice options for comics, um, for different borders, um, papers if you want any sort of um, squared paper, line paper or even um, music manuscript paper, which I've used in my example. Then if you press the plus button up at the top, um, it gives you the option to insert anything just like in any other app, it's usually the plus sign. So you can insert photos from the camera roll, so that could be things that you found online and saved. Or you can use the camera to take photographs, that's really useful if children have done their work on paper and they want to take pictures of their work and insert it into the, into the ebook. Um, then there's also the pen, if you click on pen um, it allows you to draw and you can change the thickness of the pencil and colours and things like that. Um, if you add text, you can type into the box and then you can edit that to be whatever font size you want. But um, also importantly today, we're looking at adding sound. So you can click on add sound and you'll see the big red button to start recording. All you have to do is to tap that. It will record whatever sound um, 
you're making with instruments or if you're just doing a voiceover to tell the story. And when you finish the recording, it makes a little icon like this and you can place that wherever you like on the page. Um, and then when somebody is looking at your ebook, they can tap on that and they'll hear whatever sound it is that you've created. In addition to that, there's a few more features. If you see if where the three dots are and it says more, you can add shapes. So for storytelling, uh, the speech bubble and the thought bubble are obviously really useful. Um, and also you can add in files. So if you have pre-recorded sound files um, that you've downloaded or created another, another app and saved them, you can also add these in to the book there. Okay, so I'm going to come out of this new book just now and take you into the example. Okay, so this is the Gruffalo um, and I had a little bit of help from my little cousins who were roped into doing this, Finley and Libby, so they're responsible for the lovely illustrations in this example. Um, what I'm going to do is press the play icon in the top right hand corner so that you can see what this looks like as a finished book. Okay, so it allows you just to um, turn the pages. I've started this book with a little music activity which the children could do to um, activate their prior knowledge about the sounds and instruments that they've explored um, and also think about some of the sounds that they could add to their story. Um, so on the first page I've written, can you find instruments or objects which make these sounds? So you could have the headings there, shake, tap, ting, boom, and the children can draw a picture of an instrument that makes that sound, or they could take a photograph of one and add it in. And then I've just added a little audio recording of what that instrument sounds like. So this is something that the children um, could do to sort of consolidate their understanding of the different sounds. Um, so if I just click on shake there, you should hear the maraca. And the same with tap, we've got some claves. Okay, so you get the idea with that. Well, on the um, opposite page, we've got character rhythms. So this is a slightly more um, advanced activity um, that children could do, um, which is just making up a really simple rhythm for um, each character within the story. So you can see there I've got a rhythm for the Gruffalo, a rhythm for the snake and a rhythm for the mouse. And one of the easiest ways to get children to create and to perform rhythm is to do it to words because the rhythm matches up with the syllables of the words. So you can see there the first rhythm I've got is Great Big Gruffalo. And I've chosen a drum for the Gruffalo. Um, and I've performed that rhythm on the drum and recorded that in a sound clip. So I'll just let you hear what that sounds like. Okay, and you can see there that what I've done is use stick, basic stick notation um, symbols to represent the rhythm. And that's following along the same lines as what the YMI tutors um, prepare and work with the children on in class. Um, another example is the little mouse. I played that on a chime bar to let you hear that rhythm. And then the snake. Okay, um, but you don't have to do all that with the notation. The children could simply be saying the rhythm um, and recording it as an audio file. Um, don't necessarily have to have that written down. Okay, so this is an example of how the children could draw pictures um, to sequence the story beforehand and then put them into their book and tell the story to go with their pictures. Um, so you would just take a photo of their work and use that plus sign to add it in. Um, and you can see I've got a few examples of what, different ways that children can retell the story. So they could type in sentences to summarise what's happening in that part of the story. Um, or they could add an audio file recording just of them explaining what's happening. 
Um, or they can add speech bubbles, thought bubbles, um, to tell us what the characters are thinking or saying. Um, so I'll play one of these as a little example of an audio recording. Roasted fox, I'm off. Okay, so that's obviously just an example of telling the story, but adding in a little sound effect to enhance that as well with the claves for the tapping of the fox running away. Um, another example is using a bit of paper or an everyday object for the owl. So the owl flying down to speak to the mouse. Um, okay. And again, you can see on this next page, there's a mixture of typed words, thought bubbles. Again, there's a little audio recording, which I'll let you hear. Scrambled snake, goodbye little mouse, and away snake slid. Okay, so that's just another example. Um, then on the next page, you can see I've used the pen feature to actually write some of the, um, this is, these are repeated phrases from the story. Um, and I've also added in a little sound clip for um, the Gruffalo as well. But I'll not play all of these just now. Um, this ebook is in the file section from the webinar. So if you want to go back and listen to the whole thing, you can do. Um, so I'm just going to move on just now to the end. Um, again, just using the different features of the shapes combination of text. At the very end, I've also added in a pre-recorded sound file. So again, this is something that older children might be able to do. Um, and that was when I was showing you before, if you go to the plus uh, symbol and you add in a file, that can be something that you've downloaded, uh, for example, from a website which has royalty free uh, sound samples. Uh, there's one called Ben Sound, which you're able to access on these iPads. Um, and you can search for the type of music you want, if you want it to be happy, scary, sad. And that lets the children think about the impact that music and sound can have on the atmosphere or the mood of a scene in a, in a story. Um, so I've picked some happy music here for the mouse sitting happily eating the nut at the end of the story. So I'll just let you hear what that little clip sounds like. Okay, um, and so, and you'll see, if you look back through the book, there's some scary music when the Gruffalo comes in and there's some nice or calm music at the start of the story. So just another way to um, bring in uh, music to the story. Um, okay, so the great thing about um, Book Creator is that it saves everything as you go along. Um, and when you're finished editing the book, you can choose how you want to publish it and share it with others. So if I go to my books, you can see a little square at the bottom of the screen with the upwards arrow. If you click on that, it gives you different options for how to export your ebook. Um, for this type of ebook where we've got sound clips, we wouldn't export it as a PDF because that would mean we couldn't hear any of the sound. And I also wouldn't recommend exporting it as a video because that will automatically play all of the sound clips. Whereas we want to be able to read the text and then click on the sound samples uh, whenever we want to hear the sounds. So you can either choose the top one, which is to export as an EPUB, and that will basically turn it into an iBook. Um, and you can uh, read that electronically, as I just showed you there, on an iPad or on an iPhone. Um, and the other option is the bottom one there is to publish it online. So if you select that, you can sign up with your um, Glow email address and it just uploads the ebook to bookcreator.com and anybody that you share the link with for that specific book can read the book in the same way that I just showed you there, turning the pages and hearing the sound clips. Um, so that's a really great option, particularly if you want to share uh, children's work with parents. Um, so you simply would give them the link or turn the link into a QR code and give that to them and they'll be able to read their child's book or a class book, um, for example. And when you do that, there's still an option for the book to be read aloud, which can be really useful too. 
So you can see that this app um, is really versatile and it allows for differentiation, whether children are using voiceover to tell the story, if they're typing sentences or writing single words. Um, this type of book could be created by groups or individuals. Uh, for example, you could have a small group working on a particular scene from the story. They're retelling or summarising what's happening in that part of the story and maybe they're creating a soundscape to go with that particular scene. Um, and they could be put together to form then a class book. So there's different ways um, that you could use it. I mentioned um, accessing pre-made um, pieces of music. So this is one website. There are a few more, but this is one example of where you could um, download that music from to the iPads. Okay, so that's everything that I'm going to cover today. Um, so thank you very much for joining and for listening. And hopefully you've got a few ideas to take away um, with you and to have a go. Thanks very much.